seeing these arrogant young people pretending that they represented the workers, whereas in fact they were wealthy byproducts of the middle class, and wanting to dictate to everybody the system of politics which they had conceived from their half-educated reading. Hi, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Philosophy Insights. Everyone should know this one argument by Edmund Burke in today's climate of political radicalism and the mainstream cultural push for progressivism. Also, surprisingly, this theme is echoed in a core idea by Jordan Peterson. Edmund Burke was an Irish statesman and philosopher, often considered the father of modern conservatism. His thoughts and writings, particularly following the French Revolution, have left a lasting impact on how we view tradition, change, and society. Burke believed that customs and traditions are the wisdom of the ages, embodying the collective experience of the past and thus should be preserved. His perspective on the importance of customs and traditions as the wisdom of the ages became a central tenet of political philosophy. Burke argued that traditions are not mere relics of the past, but represent the accumulated wisdom of generations. They encapsulate practical knowledge and solutions that have been tested and refined over time. Burke viewed individual reasoning as limited in comparison to this collective wisdom. He believed that no single generation, including the most enlightened, possesses enough wisdom and experience to justify the wholesale redesign of societal structures that have served well over time. This skepticism towards radical change and individual rationalism is encapsulated in his famous caution against the arrogance of those who would easily disregard the traditions that bind society together. He thinks that the abstract tradition of rational inquiry that starts in French culture, I guess, with um, Descartes and moves on through the tradition of the French Enlightenment is dangerous because it neglects practicality in favor of abstract theories that have no immediate connection to historical experience. In some respects, the guillotine is the logical outcome of rationalism. It's the logical outcome of insisting that both political and moral duty comes from pure reason rather than the collected con uh, connection of our traditions, our feelings, our sentiments, our reasonings about our traditions and feelings and sentiments. In other words, the idea that we can institute a whole new world today. For Burke, traditions provide more than just historical continuity. They are essential for social cohesion. They foster a sense of community and belonging connecting individuals to each other and to their predecessors. By adhering to customs, societies maintain a stable and coherent structure. Changes to these traditions should be organic, evolving from within rather than being imposed from without, ensuring that any transition is smooth and retains the social fabric intact. Traditions, in Burke's view, also serve as the vehicle for moral and ethical values across generations. They instill a sense of duty and responsibility in individuals, guiding behavior and establishing norms that are crucial for societal order. Without such guidelines, Burke feared society would descend into moral relativism, where values are subject to the whims of contemporary thought, leading to moral decay and societal fragmentation. There are lots of things that are wrong and should be changed, uh, but the question is how. The, the revolutionary way of addressing this question is to form together a small conspiracy of the elite uh, uh, to craft a solution and then impose it from above on the mass of mankind. I take the other view, which is the classical uh, English view, which is that uh, people should be given the freedom to understand their problems and address them from their own or uh, existing repertoire of social uh, and political gestures and gradually come to some consensus. Uh, and that, that is a very different approach. Societal change should, furthermore, be evolutionary, gradual, rather than revolutionary. He argued that cautious, incremental changes respect the wisdom embedded in existing norms and structures, which have been shaped by collective experiences over time. By advocating for deference to established practices, Burke emphasized maintaining stability and order, reducing the risk of unintended consequences that often accompany sweeping reforms. He saw revolutionary changes as disruptive and potentially destructive, as they can undermine the foundation of society, leading to instability and chaos. 
Thus, Burke's approach promotes a conservative progression that ensures any new developments are compatible with the historical and cultural context of a community. Seeing these arrogant young people pretending that they represented the workers, whereas in fact they were wealthy byproducts of the middle class, and wanting to dictate to everybody the system of politics which they had conceived from their half-educated reading. And it stayed. It stayed in that class of French intellectuals ever since. And I think people like me have a, a duty to be realist in opposition and say, look, you know, this unity between the intellectuals and the workers, who was uh, um, actually creating it? It was you, intellectuals. How many workers were involved? You know, very few. Only those that you could control through trade unions. You know, uh, and uh, let's get rid of all those illusions and treat people as they are. It might come as a surprise that these principles of a major strand of conservatism are echoed in various themes by Jordan Peterson. His critique of modern radical changes and his emphasis on the importance of individual responsibility and historical continuity align closely with Burkean thought. Peterson argues that the archetypal traditions found in mythology and religion reflect deep truths about human nature and societal organization. Similarly to Burke, Peterson distrusted purely top-down planned solutions imposed on society, emphasizing the limits of reason and the complexities of human nature. One of the great advantages to conservative philosophy is that it's humble. It's humble from, a, from the perspective of social experimentation. It's, like, it's not like everything's great and we should just continue going the way we're going. It's like, well, everything isn't as broken as it might be, and I'm kind of stupid and blind and all I have is a bat and probably hitting it isn't going to make it any better. All I'll do is shatter it. And so the conservative says, it's working. Be quiet. <laughs> Sneak away. Maybe it'll keep working. And that's a perfectly reasonable perspective. Now obviously sometimes things have to change, but the conservative can come up and say, don't be thinking that you have so much evidence that what you're doing is right, or that it will have the outcome that you expected. Both thinkers, Edmund Burke and Jordan Peterson, emphasize the critical importance of learning from historical precedents and caution against the perils posed by sweeping ideological movements that tend to dismiss or undermine established knowledge and traditions. Burke's extensive critiques of the French Revolution underscores concerns about rapid, radical change without deference to historical continuity or societal stability. He saw such upheavals as dangerously ignoring the accumulated wisdom of society, which could lead to chaos and tyranny rather than genuine progress. Similarly, Jordan Peterson challenges the contemporary currents of political correctness, viewing them as a form of ideological oversimplification that disregards the complexity of human history and culture. Peterson argues that the enforcements of political correctness can often suppress necessary dialogue that contributes to the evolution of society through iterative learning and conflict resolution. He suggests that this kind of ideological rigidity can lead to outcomes akin to those during the French Revolution, where radical changes not only fail to consider the nuances of human nature, but also led to significant societal regress rather than improvement. You should, be, you should do what everyone else does unless you have a really good reason to vary. It's a good rule. It's like, you do what people have done throughout time. You grow up, you find a partner, you establish a stable relationship, you get a job, you make yourself useful, you have some children, you do something productive and interesting with your spare time, and you try to act like a respectable human being. That's what you do. That's a conservative ethos. And if you're if you have something spectacular about you that needs to be revealed to the world, then break some rules, man. Go right ahead. I'm, I'm dead serious about that. But most of the time, you don't. And even if you happen to be a special person, and you might be, 90% of you still isn't special. So most of the time, you're still going to be following the rules. And the rules aren't there to oppress. They're there to keep us at they're there to keep us away from each other's throats. Because human beings are very warlike, and we're very competitive and we're very aggressive and if we are fortunate enough to have woven together a social fabric that basically renders us peaceful and cooperative we should try disrupting that at our great peril because the general rule for human existence throughout the centuries has been turmoil and war 
and we don't have that here. And so thank God for that, and it's worth a bit of a sacrifice. Both scholars advocate for an approach to societal development that respects and incorporates the lessons of the past. This perspective does not inherently reject change, but proposes that change should be integrated with the tested structures and values that have historically provided stability and coherence to societies. Thus, Peterson's critique of modern political correctness resonates with Burke's apprehension about revolutionary fervor, as both caution against the unintended consequences of imposing radical ideological changes without sufficient respect for the underlying historical and cultural frameworks. Burkean conservatism, with its deep reverence for historical continuity and caution against radical upheaval, provides a framework that can still guide us in contemporary political discourse. As Jordan Peterson continues to draw on similar themes, their relevance remains clear. What do you think about the relationship between tradition and change? How do you see these ideas playing out in today's world? Let us know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this exploration, please like, share, and subscribe for more thoughtful discussions.